Welcome to this lecture about ultrasound of the umbilical cord. In this lecture, I will discuss the normal anatomy of the umbilical cord and structural abnormalities of the umbilical cord that may be identified during a prenatal ultrasound examination. The umbilical cord abnormalities that I will discuss include cord insertion, presentation, vascular abnormalities, distortion abnormalities, and cord masses. The umbilical cord plays an important role in fetal health and development. The normal length of the umbilical cord ranges from 30 centimeters to 100 centimeters, with an average length of about 55 centimeters. The normal diameter of the umbilical cord is less than 2 centimeters. The umbilical cord contains two arteries and one vein, surrounded by a gelatinous stroma called Wharton's jelly and covered by a single layer of amnion. The arteries follow a helical course around the umbilical vein until reaching the placenta. This results in up to 40 helical turns. Coiling is thought to protect the cord by adding strength and resisting compression of the vessels. This is a histological cross-section of the umbilical cord and the corresponding diagram shows the components of the umbilical cord. As you can see, the umbilical cord is composed of two umbilical arteries and one vein. This is the gelatinous material called Wharton's jelly. This jelly has an elastic and cushion effect which can tolerate the vibration, bending, stretching, and twisting of an active fetus. The cord content is covered by the amnion. The umbilical arteries carry deoxygenated blood from the fetus to the placenta. While the umbilical vein carries oxygenated blood from the placenta to the fetus and is connected with the left portal vein in the fetal liver. As you can see in this image, the two umbilical arteries follow a helical course around the umbilical vein. On sonographic long-axis view of the normal three-vessel cord, the two umbilical arteries are seen wrapping around the vein. While in short-axis view, the two arteries are seen lying oblique to the vein, giving Mickey Mouse appearance. The two arteries represent Mickey's ears and the vein representing Mickey's face. As you can see on the ultrasound image of the normal three-vessel cord, the diameter of the umbilical artery is less than 50% of the vein diameter. In the fetal pelvis, the two umbilical arteries course lateral to the urinary bladder and are continuous with the iliac arteries in the pelvis. In normal cord insertion, the umbilical cord inserts at or near the center of the placenta. In the fetus, the cord inserts at the umbilicus. As you can see in this ultrasound image, this is normal cord insertion in the center of the placental mass. With that in mind, let's discuss cord abnormalities. A number of abnormalities can affect the umbilical cord. Abnormalities can be related to its placental insertion, presentation, in utero distortions such as knots and nuchal cord, number of vessels present, and presence of masses. These abnormalities can influence the perinatal outcome and may be associated with other fetal anomalies and aneuploidy. First, let's discuss abnormal cord insertion. Normally, the umbilical cord inserts near or at the center of the placenta. Abnormal cord insertion is associated with fetal growth restriction, abnormal fetal heart rate patterns, placental abruption, and preterm labor. The umbilical cord insertion site should be routinely evaluated at all obstetric ultrasound examinations. The placental cord insertion is better determined by ultrasound in the first trimester because visualization of the placental cord insertion site becomes more difficult with advancing gestation, especially when the placenta is posterior. Abnormal placental cord insertion includes marginal cord insertion and velamentous cord insertion. 
Marginal cord insertion is seen in 5 to 7 percent of pregnancies and is also known as battledore placenta because of the resemblance to the racket used in battledore. Marginal cord insertion is diagnosed when the distance from the umbilical cord insertion site to the nearest edge of placenta is equal or less than 2 cm. Marginal cord insertion can change into velamentous cord insertion with pregnancy progress due to placental trophotropism. Marginal cord insertion occurs more commonly in multiple gestations and can lead to unequal placental sharing and results in growth discordance. On ultrasound, the umbilical cord is seen inserted at the periphery of the placenta. Color Doppler examination can help to confirm the site of insertion. This video clip shows marginal cord insertion. As you can see, this is the lower edge of the placenta. This is the umbilical cord inserted at the margin of the placenta. The cord here in this case is normal three vessels. Velamentous cord insertion occurs in 1 to 2 percent of pregnancies and is seen more commonly in twin pregnancies. In velamentous cord insertion, the umbilical cord inserts into the fetal membranes outside the placental margin and then travels within the membranes to the placenta in between the amnion and the chorion. These vessels are not supported by Wharton jelly or the placenta and are prone to compression, rupture, or thrombosis. Velamentous cord insertion has been described in association with several conditions including twin pregnancies, especially monochorionic twins, placenta previa, bilobed placenta, and single umbilical artery. More important to note that velamentous cord insertion is one of the most important risk factors for vasa previa. In ultrasound, the cord appears inserted into the uterine wall away from the placenta and the umbilical vessels coursing along the membranes towards the placenta. As you can see in these two different cases, the umbilical cord is inserted away from the placenta and the vessels are coursing through the membranes towards the placenta. Another important sign for velamentous cord insertion is mangrove sign. This sign is seen on color Doppler examination. Large vessels were observed to branch from a single point at the site of the cord insertion. These vessels are running between the fetal membranes and reaching the placental surface, resembling a mangrove tree. In this sign, the tree trunk and branching roots represent the cord and branching vessels. And the ground represents the placental surface. Okay, let's discuss cord presentation abnormalities. Vasa previa is a condition in which the umbilical vessels, unsupported by the umbilical cord or the placenta, run in the fetal membranes on the lower uterine segment or over the cervix. These vessels may rupture in labor, or when spontaneous or artificial rupture of the membranes occurs, carrying a high risk of fetal death. In particular, risk factors for vasa previa include low-lying placenta, resolving placenta previa, velamentous cord insertion, IVF pregnancy, bilobed placenta, and succentariate placenta. In such cases, physicians should rule out vasa previa. However, about 11% of cases of vasa previa have no risk factors. On ultrasound, vas previa appears as hypoechoic tubular structures that passing across or within 2 cm of the internal cervicalis. Spectral Doppler imaging will demonstrate fetal type of flow. As you can see on these two transvaginal ultrasound images, there is thin hypoechoic tubular structures overlying the internal cervicalis with hyperechoic walls. Color Doppler examination confirmed that the structures are blood vessels. In transabdominal ultrasound, if there is doubt about whether there are vessels in the lower uterine segment, a transvaginal imaging should be performed to evaluate the lower uterine segment. 
the location of the vessels and their distance from the internal cervicalis should be evaluated. Transvaginal scanning complements transabdominal scanning because some vessels may be difficult to see. Using transabdominal as well as transvaginal scanning enables these structures to be visualized from different angles and improving detection. As you can see on the image on the right side of the screen, this transvaginal scan shows small tubular structures overlying the internal cervicalis. On the image on the left side of the screen, color Doppler examination confirmed that the structures are fetal blood vessels. The differential diagnosis for vasa previa is umbilical cord presentation. Cord presentation is also known as funic presentation. It is a condition in which umbilical cord is present between the fetal presenting part and the cervix. Its incidence is about 4%, with a higher incidence in breech presentation and multiple gestations. On ultrasound, the cord is seen between the fetal presenting part and the internal cervicalis. Unlike vasa previa, the placental cord insertion here is usually normal. Cord presentation should be differentiated from vasa previa by changing the mother position. In cord presentation, the cord will move, while in vasa previa, the location of the cord segment will not change with changing mother position. Cord prolapse is protrusion of the cord into the cervix after rupture of the membranes. In this condition, the cord becomes the presenting part and is at risk for compression. Risk factors for umbilical cord prolapse include multiple gestations, breach or transverse presentation, polyhydramnios, low birth weight, premature rupture of membranes, and long umbilical cord more than 90 centimeters. On ultrasound, cord prolapse is diagnosed when the umbilical cord is herniated into the cervical canal. As you can see, this is a longitudinal midline view of the uterus and cervix. The cervix is dilated, with a loop of umbilical cord is prolapsing downwards to the level of the vagina. Let's discuss vascular abnormalities of the cord. First, let's discuss single umbilical artery. Single umbilical artery is also called two-vessel cord. The condition results when there is a congenital absence of one of the two umbilical arteries. In the normal situation, there are two umbilical arteries. For unknown reasons, the absence of the left umbilical artery is much more common than the right one. The prevalence of single umbilical artery is about 1%. Fetus with single umbilical artery is at higher risk for IUGR. Single umbilical artery is larger than normal artery. Usually, its diameter is more than 50% of the vein diameter, and the cord is less coiled than three-vessel cord. When found with other fetal anomalies, it can be associated with trisomy 13 and 18, maternal diabetes, multiple gestations, GU anomalies, cardiac anomalies, CNS anomalies, sirenomelia, and omphalocele. On ultrasound, two vessels only are seen in short axis view of the umbilical cord. The caliber of the artery is usually large and more than 50% of the vein diameter. In the longitudinal view, two vessel cord frequently appears straight and non coiled. In the fetal abdomen, the umbilical vessels are seen on only one side of the fetal urinary bladder. This is pathognomonic for single umbilical artery. In axial view of the umbilical cord, the two-vessel cord resembles a soda can tab when the amount of Wharton's jelly is adequate. This is called soda can tab sign. The second umbilical cord vascular abnormality is umbilical vein varics. 
It refers to focal dilatation of the umbilical vein, typically in the intraabdominal extrahepatic portion. The etiology of this abnormality is uncertain. It accounts for about 4% of the umbilical cord malformations. One third of the cases are associated with other anomalies and aneuploidy. However, most of the cases have normal outcome if it is isolated finding. The normal diameter of the umbilical vein increases from 3 mm at 15 weeks to 8 mm at term. Umbilical vein diameter is abnormal if it is greater than 9 mm or its size is 1.5 times larger than the size of the intrahepatic umbilical vein. Umbilical vein varix is diagnosed on ultrasound examination by visualizing anechoic cystic structure between abdominal wall and liver. Color Doppler may reveal turbulent flow and displays continuity with the umbilical vein. Diagnostic criteria include an umbilical vein diameter greater than 9 mm or an enlarged varix to at least 50% more than the diameter of the intrahepatic umbilical vein. The differential diagnosis are cystic structures in the fetal abdomen include the normal stomach and fetal gallbladder, cystic abdominal masses such as enteric duplication cyst, colidocal cyst, and umbilical artery aneurysm. Doppler examination is essential for diagnosis of cord varix. The presence and type of flow will exclude other masses. Distortion abnormalities of the cord include cord knots and entanglement. Cord knots are classified into true and false knots. Cord knots are rare and seen in less than 1% of pregnancies. False knots are kink or focal redundancy of the umbilical cord and are not clinically significant. Most of the cord knots are loose. Risk factors for umbilical cord knots include long umbilical cord, polyhydramnios, small fetus, and excessive fetal movements. On ultrasound, hanging new sign is highly specific for cord knots. It is visualization of a segment of the umbilical cord that is closely surrounded by another loop of cord. As you can see, this is a transverse section of the umbilical cord surrounded by a loop of umbilical cord. This appearance is called hanging new sign. 3D and 4D ultrasound are very helpful and can demonstrate cord knots clearly. The image on the right side of the screen is 3D power Doppler. And the image on the left side of the screen is 3D HD live mode. Both images show umbilical cord knots. Cord entanglement. This is a classic feature of monoamniotic twin pregnancies. Cord entanglement can be diagnosed by 2D ultrasound, color, and pulse Doppler. On ultrasound, a lump of cords with two different heart rate patterns can be found. A branching pattern of the umbilical cord is seen at the level of the entanglement. The presence of a notch in the umbilical artery wave or umbilical venous pulsation may reflect tight cord entanglement in monochorionic monoamniotic twins. Nuchal cord is an umbilical cord that encircles the fetal neck. This condition occurs in 5 to 29% of pregnancies with a tendency to increase with advancing gestational age. It may resolve spontaneously later in pregnancy. It is of clinical significance when there are two or more loops around the fetal neck. On ultrasound, loops of umbilical cord are seen wrapping around the neck in transverse section, as you can see in this video clip. Important ultrasound sign is pivot sign. 
This refers to impressions of the umbilical cord on the skin of the posterior aspect of the fetal neck on grayscale ultrasound in sagittal view, as you can see on this ultrasound image. Okay, let's discuss umbilical cord masses. The lesions will be discussed are umbilical cord cysts, hemangioma, and teratoma. Umbilical cord cysts are classified as true cysts and pseudocysts. Pseudocysts are most common and represents fluid accumulation in the Wharton jelly. Pseudocysts are located close to the fetus. True cysts are detected in 3% of first trimester pregnancies and usually have no clinical significance. 20% persist into the second trimester. Umbilical cord cysts can be single or multiple. On ultrasound, umbilical cord cyst appears as a cystic mass in the cord. It is seen eccentric in relation to the cord. No flow seen on color Doppler examination. The cyst size ranges from few millimeters up to five centimeters. Ultrasound cannot differentiate true from false cysts. Umbilical cord hemangioma. Cord hemangioma is extremely rare benign vascular tumor. It is the most common tumor of the umbilical cord. Most often it is an isolated anomaly. However, it may be associated with polyhydramnios, IUGR, and GI anomalies. On ultrasound, umbilical cord hemangioma appears as an echogenic or multicystic mass that is located near the placental insertion of the cord. Umbilical cord teratoma is a rare congenital tumor having different cellular components derived from more than one germ layer. Its texture varies from soft to firm solid cartilaginous or bony structures. Teratomas are usually considered benign. About one half of all reported cases are associated with other malformations. On ultrasound, it may appear solid or cystic. It may contain tissue from all three germinal layers. As you can see in this image, there is a sizable mixed cystic and solid mass with internal septae. Color Doppler revealed blood vessels coming from the umbilical cord. There was a normal fetal and placental cord insertion. The final diagnosis was immature teratoma of the umbilical cord. Thank you very much for your attention.